different way. All right, there's a lot for us to talk about today on this topic. We'll start it off with our Mr. Independent, as we call him. Paul Rykoff is here in New York with us, the host of the Independent Americans podcast. Good to see you, Paul. Good to see you. So what do you make of this um, TikTok back and forth? It's interesting. Usually things are so predictable, right, in Washington. One party's going this way, one party's going the other way. This, not so much. You know, I think it's a national security issue. Right. I think that hasn't been emphasized enough. I mean, having the Chinese have access to millions of phones across America is a national security risk. And I think ultimately the Chinese are going to have to sell. And I hope this is a wake-up call for folks. I think, I think a lot of folks who are disconnected from this might not have kids, might not have people on the platform, might not be as close to it. But for those of us who have little kids, for those of us who are focused on national security, I think it's a no-brainer. I don't want the Chinese government on my phone and in my pocket at all. What do you think of the uh, First Amendment arguments? We're going to get into this in some detail in a moment. It's basically the Trump argument. It's the Elon Musk argument. It's these people have come out and said, no, this is a slippery slope. Let's be careful about what we do to TikTok. You can say whatever you want, but, but it doesn't mean the Chinese should have access to the platform by which you say it. Right. I think that's a different thing. I think there's a lot of folks rallying around the free speech thing because it might be popular. But I think ultimately, if you go back to asking yourself, do you want the Chinese government tracking you, having access to your content, being able to push information to your children? I think when you put it in that context, everybody thinks, in my view, it's a no-brainer. All right. Let's talk about another issue. We'll get back to TikTok many times uh, during the show, including in just a few minutes. Here's the other issue. I say you're Mr. Independent. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has been making a lot of news here over the last few days. Most recently, these headlines have come out that says he's considering the New York Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers and or the former Minnesota governor and professional wrestler Jesse the Body Ventura to be his running mates. You, to me, you represent the independent movement of this country. So what does this all mean? I think it's a big step backward for the independent movement. Really? I think a lot of, yeah, I do. 49% of us in, in this country are independents. I think we want serious, credible, uh, bipartisan, unifying candidates. I think that, that, that Kennedy has been a very polarizing guy. He was a Democrat about five months ago. And in my view, he's not really an authentic independent. When it, when it, when it comes to, to Aaron Rodgers, I mean, you said it. This is the most Jets thing ever. I mean, he's <laughs> woefully unqualified. He's kind of a joke candidate. And Ventura, look, Ventura was historic. I've known Jesse Ventura. He, he, we, he supports independence. He's a Navy SEAL, but that was 25 years ago. Right. He's gone a little bit off into, into no man's land since then. He's not viewed as a serious candidate. I think overall, this underscores that people are, are, are dismissing independence, and I think they do that at their own peril. But you've got a lot of people who want to be independent. They want to take that yes. label, and they want to run with it because they know it could be popular. I don't know how independent it is, but it represents a certain faction, right, of what's happening in politics in our country right now and where this is, is, is going. I mean, think about whether it's Ventura or whether it's Rogers. You have a lot of football fans. You have a lot of wrestling fans, the demographic. We know of those fans, you know, mostly male voters. I think a lot of them might be Trump voters, which is interesting. I don't know if they take away from that. And then there's this whole kind of, for lack of a better way of saying it, the kind of the Joe Rogan crowd yeah. that they identify with. You're yeah. saying, yeah, you there, know who there, those there's people There's a populism, are. right? And there's also kind of a rebellious streak, a protest vote. People who want to see the status quo blown up, who want to kind of stick it to the, the system and, and, and have some change. And I think all these people represent that. Sports always brings an element. Wrestling brings an element. Yeah. But there's also a strategy here. RFK Jr. needs needs press. He needs relevance. He needs fundraising. And by doing this, we're talking about him. The media is covering it. Absolutely. It's increasing his fundraising. And I still think he is a factor in this race. He's on the ballot in Utah. We talked about it before. And he's trying to get in the ballot in other states. If he does, he could be the difference in swing states, whether you like it or not. Depending which states. I'm thinking Arizona, some other states. If he's on the ballot in these states, you're right. He could have an impact. Now, while we're talking about this, Paul himself is just back from the South by Southwest get together in Austin, Texas. And you made some news I don't know if you meant to or not, and it concerns RFK. Let's put up the headline from the Austin American Statesman that says, the panel on independence voting power was dropped over objections to the late edition of RFK Jr. You were supposed to be the moderator of this panel. What happened? Well, the, the organizer tried to add uh, RFK a couple days out. And we had already had a panel set with some folks from Veterans for All Voters, a nonprofit focused on veterans. Right. We had Andrew Yang scheduled. And the organizer decided that they wanted to try to add RFK late. It looked like RFK's people were trying to get him into the conference, and they didn't have any luck. So they tried to kind of hijack what was otherwise a bipartisan, not candidate-focused discussion. And I said, look, this is a late audible that I don't appreciate, I don't approve, and we had no control over. We were going to say, no, find another place for him and let us have our discussion. But I think it underscores what I said earlier. Okay. He's trying to make waves. He's trying to be disruptive. He has to. He's an outside candidate, and he has to try to push for relevance. That's a conference with a lot of young people, a lot of independent people, and he might have been well-received, but he also would have gotten counter-protesters, and I don't think you want somebody walking on your set last minute and saying, hey, I'd love to join the show. That's what That's you did set. today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, you, had, you, you, you opposed this because you don't like his politics or you thought it didn't fit in this panel. 
It didn't fit in the panel because we didn't offer it up to all the candidates, which would have been Got appropriate, it. number one. It was more of a discussion about candidates rather than the candidates. It was a discussion about the independent movement. I see. And it would have been hijacked by him, which is kind of the strategy here. He wants to hijack the national conversation. That's a good strategy. If you're only 15, 20 percent in the polls, you got to jam yourself into any discussion you can. And controversy, in my view, is good for his campaign. Right. He needs to be that kind of a disruptor. And now he can say, oh, Rykoff or the conference or these people are trying to, trying to push me out. And that's not the case. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of not adding a pretty dramatic addition in the 11th hour. You're going to have Jesse the body after you if you keep this up. All right, uh, so uh, we'll see. Th good discussion. You can hijack our panels any day uh, that you want, but uh, thanks for explaining that, Paul. Good Sounds to see good. you as always. Let's get back to the TikTok story. So, News Nation's Joe Khalil.